Hi, everybody. Thank you for stopping by Living To Do's review of Married at First Sight, Season 14, Episode 5. It's a sure thing. Before I get started with the review, I would um, like to ask you if you would please subscribe to the channel. I would really appreciate it and or like and share it. Um, just to help this little channel grow. Um, it's coming along, but it's going slowly but surely, but I'm happy with the pace. But if you could please assist me with that, I would really appreciate it. And so let's just get started with this review. The first couple that we'll talk about is um, Noi and Steve. Noi and Steve. Okay, this is, um, they're a nice loving couple. Um, they had their first scene. They show him waking up in the morning. And um, Steve says he doesn't mind kissing without brushing his teeth as long as it's no tongue. They seem to be um, uh, affectionate. I'm not sure about intimate. It's kind of questionable if they consummated their marriage. Uh, but they're the type of couple anyway. Noise is the type of person that doesn't... Um, she doesn't uh, kiss and tell. Uh, you would think with her outgoing brother and her alter ego that a side of her is kind of um, outgoing and very open about that. But she's I, I know that she's not the type of person to say say that or not. Um, they talk about things that they like to do. And Steve says he likes to camp. And Noe says no camping because um, there's, no, um, there's no showers, though. Steve says there could be showers out there, but Noi says no sleeping outside. <laughs> and I'm with her on that. That's just something that's that's in Steve's blood. He like he's adventurous, and of course he likes to camp. But she's just not an outdoor an outdoorsy type person. Um, later they go on a picnic, and um, in the picnic they start they talk about more things. Um, <laughs> they talk about poop <laughs> I guess Steve had to go and I guess he calls it going to a meeting <laughs> which is cute um they are very comfortable with uh, each other noise keeps mentioning that she thinks she's falling in love and she even told him that she thinks she's falling in love and he said basically okay <laughs> But he just thinks that's too soon after three days. He doesn't feel, I mean, he likes her and all, but he's not at that love stage just yet. And he wants to let it go at its own pace. And that's just a little too soon for him. And I, okay, that makes sense. Um, they go to dinner. Uh, they have fun. Annoy talks about their chemistry. And Steve says there's been potential for, uh, love earlier they had gone out with the couples on a catamaran they found out they both cheated but they both cheated on their um ex-partners when they're about 18 years old so it's not a big deal steve says as long as you learn from that later they're in a pool and uh steve he, they're hugging on each other steve says he's attracted to his wife and it shows you know she's a cute girl and and, and Noi, she's really pushing the I issue. She's asking him, do you like kissing me? And, you know, he likes it. But I think in this relationship, Noi is the one moving really, fa really fast. She wants to get to that love stage real quick. And she wants Steve's confirmation on this as well. She, of course, she's hoping that he feels the same way. But... She is moving so fast. It's only been three, maybe four days at best. And she's already there. She's taking this process and she's accelerating it. But he wants to, um, he feels it, but not as quickly as she does. She even cries when she speaks about him. She really likes him. She's over, she's emotional when she talks about him. Um, she really probably should slow down and reevaluate things and, don't just be uh, overly infat infatuated with somebody and mistake it for something that it's not. Okay, the next up, uh, the next couple we'll talk about is Chris and Alyssa. 
Alyssa being our everyone's uh, least favorite person. Early on, Chris says he's still hopeful. I don't know why he's saying that. If he really, truly believes that on his own, or are the producers pushing him to say that? Because um, after the way this woman has treated you, <laughs> once, twice, three, four times, no. No, and there's you can't even see a reason for it. I don't know what you're hopeful about. Uh, they do surprisingly enough. I uh, they went on a um, one of those activities together, and I was surprised that they went together. I'm actually surprised Alyssa joined Chris in the activity. The first activity they did was paddle boarding, and she was game. She was up for that. Um, she says she she's trying to be the bigger person. She's trying to be the bigger person. You would have to be. He didn't do anything wrong. You really need to apologize, change your behavior, and keep it consistent because you you're the one in the wrong. You know, uh, he's tried everything with you. Um, she does at first seem like she's coming out with a better attitude. They get on the paddle board. Steve has never done, I'm sorry, not Steve. Chris has never done this before, but uh, Alyssa has. Chris is struggling. He gets up on the paddle board and he's falling off a lot. Um, she thinks it's funny, but I'm just hoping that Chris is not falling off that pa paddle board to get a reaction to um, self-deprecate himself, you know, to, I don't know, to just to get her closer, perhaps. Some people do that. Um, and I'm just hoping, just do your best at the task and try, don't do that. Um, don't play any games anyway for it. Just be yourself. Um, but um, they seem to have a good time at Paderborn. They do stop and talk. And she says that the ex, she's talking to to Chris and she says the experts just didn't get it right she talks about going having a, a psychic going to a psychic in the psychic you know telling her future and says that uh the the psychic knew what her her mate would look like and he the psychic told her that he would have pretty eyes and an eagle uh tattoo and I guess because this guy doesn't have these things is another red flag for her. I mean, if you're basing anything on a psychic like that, that's crazy. She's just not in touch with reality. Uh, I don't know. She was comfortable in telling him this. She's looking for an out anywhere she can. Um, the psychic told him that you would have an eagle tattoo. Oh, um, they do another um, activity, which was snuba diving, which is a combination of snorkeling and scuba diving, which looks fun. I've heard about it before. Um, I wish I could do it. I'm severely claustrophobic, but I don't, I don't think I could do it, but it looks like fun. Uh, Chris ended up going by himself. Uh, Alyssa was at the shore watch, watching him. And uh, while he was getting uh, ready for his activity, he's suited up. Of course, he doesn't have a shirt. And he talks about how he had to lie about his weight. or he, He's mentioning his weight. Now, Alyssa talks about his weight. He has a belly. He's um, rather pale with a belly. Um... And Alyssa says that he is not her type physically. Uh, <laughs> she was trying to be choose her words wisely in saying it. There's just nothing you like about this guy, guy girl. That's all there is to it. Now, while he is snuba diving, she's first at the shore watching, and then she walks away. Then she's like a um, little at a table. And she's talking to the producers and they're like, uh, what do you want to do? And she says she wants to leave here. I don't know if she wants to leave the, the snuba diving or the resort or the honeymoon. Um, and she's, and she's crying. Um, 
she saw, she's saying that she's a really a nice person, that she's not happy. And um, I guess Chris is done with his snooba um, activity. So he lo- it looks like he's a, um, approaching her. And she says to the producers, tell him not to come around here. I'm like, this guy, the, the mixed signals that you give him, he just got into the water. You were okay. Now you're up here away from him, not at the shore waiting for him, waiting for him. And as he's approaching you, because these things, things are okay, cool enough to approach you. You're going to have, tell someone to tell him to get away. What signal is that sending? You're crazy. We're still, you're not telling him, just because you're not attracted to him, doesn't mean he can't sit down and film with you, sit down, have a meal with you. Why are you crying? It's been established that you're not attracted to him. Why are you crying? (laughs) Oh my God, this girl. (laughs) She, they just found a doozy in in uh, in Alyssa. Just a doozy. Okay, so let's let's talk about someone else. Um, let's talk about Lindsay and Mark. Okay, Lindsay and Mark, we know, has consummated their marriage. Uh, when asked, Lindsay is just giggles. <laughs> That's a sure sign that. You did something, or yeah, the answer is yes in this case. Um, Mark and Lindsay have a, convers- a conversation, and Mark, in the nicest way he could possibly do it, he told Lindsay about herself, about her behavior. Um, he was basically seeing that he doesn't want to see a repeat of that, and he did it in the nicest way. I believe she received it um, okay. She didn't have an outburst or too much of a concern about that. I think she noticed that he was doing it in the nicest way possible. Um, and he doesn't want too much drinking as well. But then in the next scene, they go out, looks like they're at a mixology class where they're making drinks. So if you don't want her to drink, don't let the first thing you do is take her out uh, to make drinks and drink testing and all that. She shouldn't be doing that. <laughs> Um, they talk well while they're drinking their drinks and she, Lindsay says that she's dated every engineer in the book. I don't know. That is, <laughs> I don't know how Mark is to receive that. That just sounds like too many men. Um, but Mark, Mark, I must say has a good heart. He's a good person. Uh, She's just really lucky to have someone understanding, perhaps too understanding. But then again, he is stepping up. He sees something that he doesn't like in her. He is trying to address it directly with her to nip it in the bud. Um, But he is a good heart and a good person. And I think he just wants that, you know, he doesn't want to have trouble and conflict. That's not who he is. And if his wife can dial it back a little bit, uh, you know, I think, you know, that's what everybody wants. I don't know why Linz, Lindsay can't see that for herself. Um, maybe if she watches this show back and she sees her behavior, that she can tweak it a little bit, make some changes. Um, they go to dinner. Uh, and at dinner, Lindsay looks at Mark and she says that she can see that he's stressed. And he is stressed. He finally opens up how he's feeling. And he feels like he can't breathe. He wants things to go slow and steady and not so lovey-dovey. And uh, I don't know. I think he'd really try to convey what what he wanted for her, from her. Basically, he didn't like her attitude uh, on the plane, even when he first met her, the confrontation with others. Uh, There was a little spat on the boat when they had a group activity. He just doesn't want this. This is not what he's looking for, for, and it is stressing him out. Uh, And then Lindsay 
isn't receiving this well. They're supposed to be out on a romantic dinner and on, in the, on the romantic dinner, he's basically saying no more lovey-dovey stuff. Now, they're ones that definitely have consummated this marriage. And apparently this is a bad sign for you people not to be doing that too early because it does, it seems like people who do that, it doesn't work out, especially when it's too early. I mean, it's going to happen eventually, but when it's too early, it doesn't seem to work out. There seems to be a pattern of that. Um, but Lindsay is the type of person, she's not going to pull back a little. She says she's going to pull all the way back. That means no more lovey-dovey. And she goes, while we're pulling back, oh, she just let it all, she showed what's, <laughs> what's going on in that little uh, hotel room. She says, no more clogging the toilets. <laughs> No more passing gas in bed. Of course, she used a different word. No more full frontal. Uh, I guess that's full frontal nudity. Um, she is, you know, it's all or nothing. It's what she said. She's all in or she's going to pull all the way back. Uh, she had zero romance on her romantic dinner. She was just ready for bed. You know, basically, she's hurt. Uh, he's not seeing the thing seeing things the way she's seeing that he's seeing them uh he's hurt by her behavior i don't think she sees that he's hurt that he you know he had to stand up for her put him in a position that he didn't want to be in it could have been uh alleviated it didn't have to be you can control the situation this girl acts like she can't control herself and he has to come in the back and clean it up this is not something he wants to do and nobody wants to do that uh and asking to pull back i believe Lindsay feels that she's not wanted that's how she's reading it uh and she goes resorts to name calling before she just loved him to death and now she's calling him a stupid idiot you know i and it's early on i think that kind of name calling could continue and i think that could be you know, definitely a detriment in the relationship but it could actually be a downfall in the relationship uh she's just um uh she's immature she's we all know she's over the top uh and she's hurting herself she really 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 needs to control that okay so let's talk about uh the fourth couple which would be katina and elijah uh they're cuddling in bed and uh apparently Olajuwon's cuddling techniques are not up to par with Katina. Uh, they're trying it, but he's actually sweaty. He sucks at it, but he's also sweaty, too sweaty. And uh, during her confessional, Katina suggested that he gets Botox for his sweatiness. They go out to the gym. That's his thing. They go to the gym and uh, when they go to the gym, Olajuwon really works out Katina, overworks her, making her do things again and again. They're not done the right way. Uh, he, he just, he just out, just really worked her too much. Uh, he didn't think she was taking it too seriously. He told her to get real. You're in my element, respect it. Uh, he even threatened to take off his ring and during the gym, because she wasn't doing something correctly, I think she kind of stood up for herself because this was just too much. First of all, this girl has a gorgeous body. I don't know what her workout regimen is, but it is working for her. He really doesn't need to step in. <laughs> She's doing a great job. Um, uh, they In the evening, they go to a cafe. It looks like a cafe sit setting. And... They talk about they had a uh, they were at a, an excursion earlier in the day and they discuss it and uh, they had they grouped off the men and the women so all the women were together and uh, Elijah Wan talked about Lindsay playing the victim and how she got in his up in her face and he was happy that uh, Elijah Wan was happy that Katina defended him. They talked about um, their relationship. He's really, he really, really likes her. Um, 
and he, Katina doesn't want to share her man. He has offered to delete. And in fact, he said he deleted his Instagram. Um, and he, and he likes her. He even likes her without having sex. Uh, he has to control his body, uh, for that. But he says that it's a joy just to be with her even without having sex. And he's trying to save himself, save it to make it really special. And he's saying all the right things. Uh, I, I'm just hoping he means this. I, first of all, I have, I had absolutely zero faith in him in the beginning. Uh, I'm not sure if I do have much more faith, maybe just a tad much, you know, uh, I'm, I'm just waiting for the other shoe to drop with him. Uh, you know, with his temper, uh, I'm just expecting the worst from him. So I'm just going to wait for it. Um, the last couple that I have to talk about is Jasmina and Michael. Michael says that he feels a distance between him and Jasmina and Jasmina thinks that he's overthinking this and she thinks his overthinking it can ru ruin the whole experience their a time together. Uh, we show them having a little uh, time together at a swim up bar, which looked like fun. And they discuss why uh, he's feeling the difference or the distance between them. He thinks if his efforts are not seen as a hundred percent, he gets nervous. So he is all in. He wants her to see and feel that he doesn't think she, I don't know what's making him think she doesn't feel it. Um, and that's making him nervous. And I think he's starting to question, uh, everything. Uh, he was talking about expecting the worst because that's a coping mechanism. All the death that he's had in his family, a lot of death in a sh you know, he's, what, 20 some odd years old. He was awfully young when his brother died. I'm not sure how he died. Then the father died after that. Uh, he's used to getting through everything on his own, alone. So I think he's going to have to learn to open up to Katina uh, when he's going through something like that. Apparently, um, during their excursion with the group on the catamaran, Michael thought he was cut off when uh, he was talking by Jasmina and later he was looking for an apology and Jasmina didn't think she cut him off uh, when they were talking. The They played back the scene. I didn't see where Jasmina cut him off. It, it didn't look like, looked like he said something. He said whatever he wanted to say when he was finished, she added to whatever he was saying. So it wasn't a cut off at all. Unless there was something in the editing, but this was the time to show us if what happened, what he said happened, but what he said from what they show, it didn't happen. Um, they got in a tiff about this. Um, she, she didn't want to apologize to him the way, uh, he wanted it. In fact, she says, I'm not going to apologize to you the way you want me to apologize. And um, basically, uh, Michael said, we'll just have to agree to disagree. This is when they were sitting at dinner. Um, I just have to say that um, Jasmina, she looked so beautiful at dinner. She's just a very naturally beautiful, striking woman. And um, the lighting, her clothes, just looking really, um, the contrast on her skin and the lipstick she was wearing. She was very, 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 very um, gorgeous. Uh, one more thing I wanted to say about uh, Katina and Olajuwon is just after their dinner, Olajuwon set up their room where there was roses all over their bed. Um, he told Katina that he would take care of her. He took her shoes off, rubbed her feet. She was, um, crying on camera about him. 
when she spoke about him. I just wanted to mention that was a very loving scene that I missed to talk about. So back to Michael and um, uh, Jasmina. Jasmina also mentioned that the way Michael speaks to her is abrasive. His tone is abrasive. And he says he's aware of it and he's working on it. So um, I still have faith in this couple. But uh, it's a slow process. I, and I think a lot of it has, surprisingly enough, has to do with Jasmina. For someone who is an optimistic person, she's not so optimistic with Michael and these little tiffs. Uh, she seems to have, a I don't know, to me, somewhat of a guard up. Seems like she should relax a little bit. Uh, I don't know. Uh, to me, other than he was wrong about her cutting him off, I'm just seeing a little bit of, uh, I don't know, something guard up with, with Jasmina. So the group scene, uh, they have the group scene, and before they all get together, Olajuwon mentions that Lindsay DM'd him, and she apologized. So hopefully that was going to be that. However, what happened was um, they get there, and uh, the girls break off in a group, and they're all together, and they're talking a noise talking about how she's falling in love. They ask Alyssa about her situation. She doesn't want to talk about it. Uh, Lindsay at the catamaran says that Mark was perfect for her. And they ask about the situation uh, with Elijah Wan. And Lindsay had the nerve to say that it was, tr that it triggered her. And Katina, you could just tell when she said that, Katina put some, uh, she was drinking some juice and she just looked like, girl, why are you lying? And she got up in um, Lindsay's face or she addressed Lindsay and she said, you triggered yourself. <laughs> I was so happy that she said that. Lindsay needs to know that she was acting like a Karen, blaming somebody else for her behavior. She started everything. If you didn't do this, Lindsay, none of this would have happened. There's nothing to say. And you wouldn't have to sit up here and lie and say you were triggered. You did everything you did. It was all, everything that happened was your fault. Um, Katina said that um, that she poked at people. She's manipulative. She's kind, but she's sneaky. And I thought that was, you know, you, two things can be the same, uh, true at the same time. You can be kind, but you can be very sneaky. And I think she is. And Lindsay just, you know, resort to name calling, calling her rude because she pointed all this out. I think the word trigger is being overused. It's not you're out. Um, you can't just say that and people are going to just think, oh, uh, already feel bad about uh, for you that you were triggered about something when you're the one who instigated the whole thing. Um, but they tried to explain to her. Um, K Katina walked away and Jasmine tried to re-explain to Lindsay that you're not a bad person. Um, and you know, she is a nice person, but she does have this way of getting on people's nerves of everybody that everybody has seen, um, on every episode, she's just over the top way too much. And not everybody's going to accept that behavior the same way. Mark tried to explain that to her earlier. Um, now Lindsay tried to say in her confessional, never to judge somebody on their truth and experience and or lie. You can say that was your experience, but everybody was there. They all witnessed it. You're lying. You're trying to get sympathy so you don't look bad. Um, the guys had a small scene together. Steve told about, told the guys how, um, that the word love is being thrown around in his relationship, but that noise throwing that um, word around. Steve and Mike talk about uh, Michael's issues with Jasmina, and Steve um, advised him to pull back a little. And I think that's good. He should pull back a little. 
and and what my, uh, Steve doesn't know is that Michael's overthinking too much, everything, so he needs to pull back on that. That's the thing he needs to pull back on. Um, Elijah Wan, he admitted that he overworked Katina for a reason. Uh, I guess he wanted her to say, you know, to say something was too much, not just to do it because he wanted to. But I don't know how that's a mixed signal because, first of all, his tone with her, she almost seemed like she couldn't say no to him. He was just very, very rough um, with her. You thought this was the biggest loser, the way he was treating her. Um, Mark also mentioned him and Lindsay's issues and with her attitude and that about reeling her in, that he can only take this once or twice. Um, and he might be out. And, you know, uh, don't do that. And... Um, They had a group scene where um, they played the game Never Have I Ever. Uh, we've learned Jasmina has been arrested. She got in a fight in school. Oh, my God. You just can't imagine Jasmina arrested. But she was in school. They had a fight in school, and I guess the police were called. Um, we found out Noi and Steve both cheated in previous relationships. Um, Olajuwon, he has messed around with a mom and da uh, mom and her daughter, not at the same time, but disturbing. It was very disturbing. And everybody <laughs> thought it was disturbing and Olajuwon thought it was a great experience. Um, and he said that was his, uh, actually Katina mentioned that was his wiling, his wiling Isaac days. Um, and he was talking about threesomes that he was down if his wife was down. Elijah Wan. Um, it seems like everybody else in the group was not down with threesomes. That's just his M.O. <sighs> so that was basically the episode. There's a lot of inter their little interactions. They got to um, try to get to learn uh, know each other better. But uh, it was interesting. Um, I guess I kind of liked it because it wasn't too much drama, except with Alyssa. I don't understand her behavior. Uh, but other than that, I kind of liked it. It was a not over the top, just kind of normal. I think this is what we're kind of getting back to, just people um, meeting each other, their human behavior towards one another at this stage in a, a very serious uh, permanent relationship or, you know, a marriage. Uh, so I, I, I liked it. I liked it. Um, tell me what you thought about it out in the con down in the comments. And for now, I think I'll leave it at that. I'm going to get going cause I got living to do. Thank you so much for stopping by.